are listening to the Forza Podcast with your host, Marsh. Okay, what up, what up, what up, Canes fans? It is the Fours Up Podcast, and we're doing it a little bit different today. Um, as always, it's your boy Marsh coming at you live. It's Tuesday, August 4th, I believe, and Jordan is not here today. Instead, I am joined by my brother from another, my good friend, Mike McCoy. Mike, what up, man? What's up, Marsh, man? Thanks for having me on, dude. How you been? You know, I'm doing doing pretty good. I leave for to I leave for Miami tomorrow, so I am I am just all all the works. I'm I'm giddy as hell. I'm excited to get out of Utah. I'm ready to get down to South Florida, but I am doing good. How are you doing, man? Not bad, man. We're waiting for you to get down here. The weather's waiting for you. Uh, make sure you toss back a couple on that plane ride. <laughs> get off the plane <laughs> yeah exactly exactly okay so we got a ton a ton of things to 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 go over first off um a lot of recruiting news jason marshall five-star cornerback one of the palmetto five was expected to commit this past weekend um but as you know some things just did not it didn't happen for for one reason or another. I was with my friends on a guys trip this weekend, so I didn't really um, I didn't really see what was going on. From your end, Mike, you know what what could you kind of tell just from the the social media timeline or just reading some articles? What what did you uh, what did you pick up? Right. So I mean, from the outside looking in, man, you know, just not knowing anything, you you kind of got to think like, okay, something happened. Like something happened. Right. Because all this momentum and you know, all signs point to Miami crystal balls and everything like that. And then all of a sudden, Manny, you know, tweets his, hey, like something's going to happen. It gets everybody excited. And all of a sudden crickets. What the hell happened? So then, you know, you start wondering, like, what could it be? And I'm like, OK, is Bama swooping in late? Is some SEC school swooping in late? What's going on? But I don't know, man. Um, that's just my non-official uh what's what i'm looking for speculation Mm -hmm. and that's just it man i I really haven't seen or heard anything else about what it could be but that's what just kind of pops into my head and what kind of makes sense to me yeah yeah and 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 understandably canes fans are losing their shit i mean they are losing (laughs) their mind like they don't know how to act right now and um i mean some some of them you can't really blame them because I mean how many times have we been the butt of the joke for yeah, not getting these kind of cornerbacks? That's that's a very good point. I will say this: people need to hop off Andrew Ivins because yes. when Andrew Ivins says he he doesn't do things for clout, he doesn't do things for whatever. He's a stand up dude, and whenever he says something, it's because he knows it, and he was told this from the horse's mouth. So if he said, "Hey, look, it's going to be moved back to the weekend." I'm pretty sure he didn't just come out with that, you know, out of his ass or anything like that. But um, that's number one. Number two, going back to your point about us getting burned, not only just for cornerbacks, but for for big time local guys. That's why I felt personally, a lot of people disagree with it. That's why I felt like if it was between if there was one spot left in the class and it was between Jake Garcia and uh, James Williams, I felt that getting James was a bigger was bigger for the program because it's a five star local guy how many times have we missed out on that a lot a lot and but i do like how you you talked about andrew ivins because i think that's a good point like people are saying how andrew ivins ruined the kid's moment it's i that's ivins like that's ivins is just doing his job yep like what what is he doing wrong this time that he hasn't already done with all these other commits that is a very good point also if he says that He's not going to say something like that with the commit saying, hey, Andrew, I'm telling you this, but I don't want you to tell anybody. I'm telling you this because you work for 24-7 or whatever. He obviously said that knowing it was okay to put out. Yeah. Okay? You know, like, you look, this commitment that we're expecting, it's going to be over the weekend. He's – I've never met the guy, so I know it sounds like I'm going to bat for him, but he's just – that's just the kind of vibe I get. He's a professional, and Kansas fans need to hop off and, and, and because you, you, you love him when he's right. You know, so exactly. Yeah. And people just need to 
chill. I, I still think we end up with Jason Marshall, but yeah, I it's maybe a, it's a little nerve wracking knowing that Bam is probably pushing really really hard right now, and Jason Marshall has said publicly that he, you know, playing for Nick Saban would be a dream come true. So I think um, it's going to be an interesting next few days, but. The last piece of recruiting news I wanted to touch on is we are now two days, a little less than 48 hours from the announcement of Leonard Taylor, five-star defensive tackle. He will be announcing between the Gators and the Canes which one he wants to play for. Mike, how are you feeling about this? Oh, man. I (laughs) hate drinking the Kool-Aid, and I believe he's going to choose Miami, right? Like all signs point to it. But just like how you said, just, you know, how you alluded to a little bit earlier, how many times have we been burned and left at the altar? Remember Alex Collins, you know? Yeah, and, well, I don't I don't remember that because I, I haven't really uh, <laughs> followed recruiting more than this past year. But I remember Romello Height. Oh, oh, man. Yeah, you know, perfect example. More recent example. Something like that. Somebody that's been, yeah, Miami, this, that, or whatever. And not that Leonard Taylor has been saying it. But it's been clear working out with Tommy Streeter, but, uh, you know, wearing Miami gear in the workouts. But I think Tommy Streeter, the fact that he's been in his ear working out with him for so long, that's what kind of makes me feel okay. But even if he says, even if he says, yes, I'm picking Miami, nothing matters until December. And that's, that could change, man. Yeah, it, it really could. And, um, yeah, I – if we win this year, then I think they'll stay, but we need yes. to win. We need – we must win. We need to win. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, two days, and I'm so happy that I'll be down in Florida. I'll be driving down to the Florida Keys during that time. I think he he's announcing at like 1 o'clock Florida time, something like that. Yeah, I think it's like uh, 1 o'clock. You're, yes, you're right because I saw something on the timeline about that but yeah one o'clock is is, that sounds about right okay perfect and k so those are the two big things and we have covered both of those guys in length on this podcast because recruiting has been the only talk of the timeline (laughs) things like that um we got some honestly some bigger news and that is fall camp starts in three days dude that makes me feel I didn't do. We were talking about this before the show. I didn't even realize it. <laughs> You're like, we, I'm gonna be in Miami. Oh my god! When fall camp starts, yeah. holy crap, <laughs> dude! It starts in three days. We're gonna be playing football in three days. Canes are back at green. I mean, just just look at yourself in the mirror and say it. The Canes are on green tree in three days. That just makes me want to freaking just, just run through a wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it, and honestly, like it, it feels just like it did last year. Like we were so excited this time last year. Oh, we were doing your Sunday show back then, and man, it and it just feels like it was just yesterday. And now I it's know, it's yeah. here again. Okay, and so for all you listeners, you might have remembered back in springtime before the Canes were about to start spring uh, camp, Mike came on and we discussed the defensive lineup with us. Um, Today, Mike and I, we wanted to go over the offense for the Hurricanes going into fall camp because this is really where position battles are won and lost. This is where, you know, the official depth chart is going to come out. And on Friday, we kick off September 7th, correct? Yes. Okay, so we are we almost do. a month away from the Rhett Lashley era, Manny Diaz Part 2. So let me let, – let's go over some broad things uh, first. The Rhett Lashley offense, you got Rob Likens coaching the receivers, Garen Justice at offensive line. Uh, you still got Hicks in with the running backs. How are you feeling about this new Miami offense heading into this 2020 season? Well, dude, I mean when you hear – Lastly, say that we're going, or, or was it Manny or last? I can't remember. I think it was Lashley saying that we're going to have like a power spread. Doesn't that just make you feel a certain <laughs> type of way? Like, holy crap, that just sounds sexy as hell. Yeah. Because, like, not only is it everything that you know these guys have needed in the past, but it's everything Kane's fans have wanted to hear power spread. We're going to be great in the air, we're going to be. You know, great on the ground, and I'm looking for a tweet because Roman Kane 
uh, we all know that that guy's like a walking encyclopedia when it comes to, you know, offense <laughs> and schemes and everything like that. He asked the masses, he said, does anybody have a question about this offense? You know, drop it here. And of course I did. So I was kind of confused about, you know, power spread. Like, how is that going to work? You know, we're, we're, we're asking guys to trim down and, and, and get, and get, uh, in shape to run 80 plus plays and he was saying well it's not necessarily you know a bulk kind of thing but more like a numbers game like we're going to be running behind double teams and doubling certain guys and stuff like that i'll i'll I'll, I'll read it to you once i find it but dude i'm excited man because i just i want to see how this team does in short yarded situation which miami has sucked at for the past i don't know how many years um, I'm excited, dude. Wide open offense for athletes doesn't sound it can't get any better than that. So I mean, and and we have talked about this so much that especially with with besides a few years under Golden, this offense for the last 15, 20 years has been abysmal, right. completely horrific. And you know, from our days with Berlin, then to Kyle Wright, then to I mean, it it's just been rough, rough, rough. And right. so when you hear the words power spread, what what comes into your mind? What do you think Canes fans should be excited to see? Um, because, I mean, you first hear spread offense and a lot of people are going to assume that, you know, we're going to be seeing like Texas Tech, Washington State type right. of air it out kind of thing. But when you hear power spread, what comes to your mind? Uh, I was thinking whenever we need to muscle it on the ground, we look like Wisconsin. Whenever we want to air it out, we look like Colt Brennan in the Hawaii days. That's what I thought. Ooh. So I found the tweet that I was referring to, and um, uh, Roman was saying that with SMU, it was a lot of doubles at the point of attack and simply avoiding the second and uh, tertiary defenders. Hmm. It worked for the most part. That is power. Wouldn't say duo because no emphasis to get into the second level. They use numbers on the perimeter to loosen up the box. He also went on to say, um, and and main types are man, zone, zone and gap. In something tempo-driven, man and zone are typically your up-tempo der, uh, derivatives. Uh, your more complex gap runs, counters, trays, and powers are used as well. It just all depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I mean, he gave a lot of info. There is also a power run that falls under the gap scheme. It's so complicating aside. I, I see what we want to be a power team, meaning mentally. And if I were to bet, the team will mix between various blocking schemes. Where Rick was more zone heavy, I say lastly will favor more some man slash some gap. So okay, maybe take that for what it's worth. <laughs> okay. No, yeah. Perfect. And – and let's go through, you know, these offensive positions and the most important one obviously is the quarterback position. And we finally, we finally have a quarterback. We have De'Ara King. Um, we've talked about him a bunch, you know, 36 touchdowns, 14 rushing touchdowns in 2018 with Houston. The guy is the ultimate, ultimate weapon. The guy that we've yeah. been begging for, literally pleading for. Um, Miami as a quarterback for the Hurricanes. So how confident are you in De'Eric King? Do you think we'll see 2018 version of him, or do you think we will see him struggle a little bit? He, This is literally his money year, okay? He's playing with a chip on his shoulder, and I think he's playing – well, when I say that, I mean um, – not, not, I take that back. Not necessarily a chip on his shoulder, but he's definitely playing for something. We all know that um, he suffered the loss of his father in the offseason, you know, right around the time that he transferred here. And so I think he's playing with that in mind. And, oh, I'm sorry, he is in something called Heisman contender talk. So the nation knows about him. We have a player. He's dynamic, and he's literally something that Miami has never had at the quarterback position Um well, kind of, you know, you, we've had, you know, kind of runners and everything, but this guy's dynamic. He can make plays with his feet. You know, he can make every throw. And so I'm very confident in him. I'm very confident because I think he's going to be a leader. I think he's going to be the leader that we need for the offense. He's going to hold guys accountable. And um, he's not playing around. He came here for a reason. He loves uh, what Rasley's running, obviously. And if he didn't have confidence in the system, and obviously there's talent here, we know that that's never been an issue. Uh, I, I'm super confident in what he could bring to the table, man. Yes, I do see, I do hope that we see 2018, um, something close to 50 touchdowns on the year. Wow. 
That's that's uh, that's shooting for the stars right there. You think that he can actually get close to 50?